before I started a new graphic design studio uh, in Durban, I'm a graphic designer, and I had no clients, I had no business, there was only me, I had no staff, I had this funny little poking office under the fire escape, and after three months of staring at the fire escape, I decided I need to do something to occupy myself. So like all designers, I decided to um, design a magazine. Then the issue was, well, what magazine do I design? So what I'm going to show you now is how this thing happened. Nothing was ever planned. It's incredibly unscientific. It still is unscientific to this day. I would make a decision to do something. I would do it. Something would happen. And then I would do something other else. And uh, 15 years later and 24 issues, that's still the way it is. I discovered this amazing, truly amazing piece of typography on the front of a shopping cart abandoned outside the station. Um, and this was in the pre-digi area, I started to uh, photograph what I could see. This was a very early uh, hair salon painted uh, banner, which is also a uniquely South African thing. Most hair salons elsewhere in Africa, which is where the history of this kind of graphic language comes from, uh, tend to be more permanent, because we are a migratory, transitional, uh, consumer, uh, urban culture. These things uh, need to be portable. So, I kind of, this is actually kind of quite interesting. I mean, everyone thought I was completely mad. I mean, I was absolutely nuts. Why, as a graphic designer, do I want to do this like street stuff when I should be looking to London, Paris, and New York and trying to make my name in, in London? So, I started documenting everything, and it's now, without a shadow of a doubt, the largest archive in existence. Uh, I've lost count of the stuff that I've got. And I've got photographs of everything you can possibly think of. It was 16 pages in two colors. Uh, the paper was donated, and the print was donated, so suddenly I had my first magazine. And there was huge confusion as to how to spell juice in Zulu. And we were told it's J-U-S-E, and then we subsequently spoke to linguists, and they all argued amongst each other, and it became J-U-S-I, which has remained. So a veg bunny is a uniquely Durban thing. Come to Durban and you must have one. And then I put some of my headrest things in it, and I had a copywriter, that, and I said, look, don't write the copy, just send me something and fax it, and then this is pre email. Thank you. Galari Watatu is one of the oldest, if not the oldest, contemporary African gallery in Africa, started in 1962, became registered in 1968, and we've been trying to help. We in East Africa, sort of all the artists in East Africa, Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, you talk about Lilanga, you talk about Tinga Tinga, you talk about Jakarta the Kawi, they came first to us, we helped them to put them on the map. And they also help us for our gallery to survive. I personally love art, I love, I just appreciate. I collect, I wish I could paint, but I can't. Therefore I need to appreciate what there is and I do collect as well. Um, I just have a passion for art and the arts, fine art and just generally arts. And what's your impression of the face of art? Um, I've seen some amazing artists and it's also about the mental exposure as well, broadening what you personally, I mean you like what you know, what you're comfortable with, you actually tend to find that you're within a space. Mm -hmm. It just gives you a total broad view, and it gives you a very broad and open view and exposes you to many other pieces and many other artists you've never personally been exposed to.